All right, this is your service vehicle. These Ford Transits um, are kind of like a second home to us since we do our work out in the field every day. Uh, because of that, it's your responsibility to keep these vehicles clean, organized, and in well maintenance. Vehicle needs to be kept well organized. Um, all your boxes should be uh, Organize in a way that you can access everything easily, your tools, um, that way you're not having to rummage around to find things, uh, especially if somebody else needs to use your vehicle, we should have some sort of organization method that makes sense in here. If your vehicle looks like this, it's not very efficient for you to get in, get bulbs, and bring things out to the customer. So first thing we need to do with a vehicle that looks like this is take everything out and get it organized. There are a few items that will come with your vehicle and need to stay in the vehicle at all times. You'll have a garage door remote to open up the warehouse door. This can stay up in the front driver's seat. Your vehicle may have a GPS unit to help you navigate. If you need one and don't have one, let your field coordinator know. This needs to stay with the vehicle at all times. You'll have a charging station for the vehicle as well. This will plug in to the vehicle and allow you to recharge your laptop on the road. Uh, there is a little button on here that you'll need to turn on. Don't be alarmed if a, a fan noise comes on. These do have an internal fan to keep them nice and cool. Along with those items, you'll have some safety items as well. Uh, each vehicle comes with two cones. These will be placed around the vehicle when you are parked on a busy street. Safety vest for the same reason. If you're out in the field and uh, parked on a busy street, the safety vest will help other cars be alerted to your presence there. Each vehicle should come with a first aid kit in case of any injuries as well as a set of jumper cables in case the vehicle uh, needs to be jumped. Finally, you should have a broom and dustpan to help keep your vehicle nice and clean. Each vehicle has its own gas card. The gas card is tied to the vehicle, not to you as the driver. So this, this card needs to stay in the vehicle at all times. You have your own unique driver's pin number that you can use to get gas. Um, no matter which vehicle you are in, no matter which card you are using. Best place to store this card is going to be right up here above the driver's side, uh, clipped in above the visor. All right, <clears throat> me and Marlon here are gonna load this van and uh, show you one way to pack a van to stay organized. Um, everybody packs their van a little bit different. You're welcome to use your own method but uh, this will give you a good idea of one way you can pack this van to keep organized in here. You ready, Marlon? Yes, sir. All right, first thing we're gonna do is load up these ladders. Hold that a second. Put the big ladder in first. My safety equipment, the cones and everything's already in the van. Um, <coughs> excuse me, ladder fits real nicely right there. So next up, we'll put, uh, put this ladder right next to it. And that'll we'll leave it uh, in an easy, accessible spot for us to get while we uh, pull in and out light bulbs. So, um, first thing, let's grab our A19 bulbs. We're gonna put these on the side. What I like to do is label these so that we know exactly what type of brightness and bulb is inside this box. So right now we have our standard A19s, 27K. This will be our uh, soft lights. So I got my A19 bulbs stacked here on the side. Uh, sometimes uh, people like to unwrap these into the smaller size first. Uh, so here's the, the smaller boxes inside. If you want to open all these up and uh, have one less box to open in the field, highly recommend doing that. Slip those behind there. 
Uh, next we're going to grab our floodlights. Uh, we've got two different types of floodlight bulbs. We've got the brights and the softs. Again, we've labeled these so we know which bulb we're getting and, uh, and where. We go ahead and stack these next. Give me two more, Mara. Two more. We've got our next line of bulbs here, all labeled so I can see them to access easily. Next up is going to be the globe lights. Go ahead and hand me the globes. Oh, all at once, okay. All right. Now I've got a line here of the globes. These uh, three types of boxes fit real nicely side by side, so that's a great way to have all those accessed. Pull the ladder here, so you can see ladders fit nicely with these three bulbs. We're going to go around to the other side now and pack the rest of the supplies. Now that we've packed the bulbs in the back, we're going to pack the supplies here in kind of this space. Uh, right behind the driver's door, we have a sliding door. This is probably the door you're going to access the most, so it makes it easy to pack some more supplies back in here. Uh, first thing we need to pack our final type of bulb, that's going to be the candelabras. Marlon, if I could have three or four boxes of those, perfect. I'm going to take these and slide them against the back side of the other boxes just so that uh, I have access to those nice and easily. Next up we have our water measures. Uh, a lot of times you can have an extra box or we have a couple of bins that you can put all your water measures in. Those materials we use a lot less and they're individual, so we want to keep them all in one place. Uh, so Marlon, I'll take the plastic tub here with the water measures. You can see here we've got uh, everything organized inside this bin, kind of uh, tossed in here is our aerators, shower heads, and anything else we might need for installing the water measures. Slips those back here as well, easily accessible when I open this side door. Uh, finally, or uh, yeah, finally with the water measures, we have the pipe wrap. That that is usually loose. You can take the whole box with you, or take the loose pipe wrap. We're just gonna grab some loose pipe wrap here. Thank you. And place that right back next to our ladder. Um, other things you might have, you might have a box of night lights. If I can grab one of these boxes here of night lights, Marlin. Just that one. Yep. And we'll put that here in the side as well so that we can access that. Uh, again, there's no limits on the number of bulbs you can take, so take as many as you need. Uh, we might also have some incentives, power strips, carbon monoxide detectors. Those can come back here as well. So we'll take this box of power strips, place it where it's easily accessible. Now let's take a look at our tools. Here I've got three bags with tools in it. Uh, I've got my main bag of tools. This is what I'm going to carry into the house with me. Uh, it's got things like my carbon monoxide detector, gas leak detector, flashlight, extra gloves, anything that I want to take in my first portion of the walkthrough with the customer. Next I've got my thermostat installation bag. This is going to have things like the drill, extra screws, maybe some thermostats, things like that that I'm going to use just if I'm installing a thermostat in a home. And finally, this large bag I have uh, just some of the tools that I'm not using very often, drill bits, uh, the ruler for insulation in the attic, things that I'm not going to take into every home but still need just in case. All three of these tool bags I'm going to put right at the entrance of this sliding door, that way I can access it easily every time I go into an appointment. End of the day, uh, you've gone throughout all your appointments, you've kind of thrown things into the van to get to your next spot, perfectly normal. But when you are back in the shop, end of the day, you need to clean everything out of your van. If you have extra light bulbs, uh, maybe you've used half a box and you have a few extras lying around, good ideas to just keep a box handy, throw your extras in there. You might be able to take one or two into a home uh, on the next day. Eventually you're going to have a lot of cardboard coming out of your van. Anytime you have an extra box, this needs to get broken down and disposed of at our uh, recycling bin here at the office. What you cannot do is just leave this on the floor, leave this on the table for someone else to deal with. 
you are responsible for your own cardboard taking care of that at the end of the day. Don't save it to the morning um, where you have to take care of all of this right before your first appointments. Don't be rushed like that, especially if somebody else is gonna be using your vehicle. All this cardboard needs to be broken down before you leave for the day. So I'm here with Marlon. He is in charge of keeping track of the fleet and making sure everything is running up to speed. Marlon, a few questions for you. Um, I'm a smoker. Is it okay if I smoke in the vehicle? Not um, in the vehicle or on campus, period. So where would I need to go then? Uh, during the day I'm out in the field, I need to have a smoke. What should I do? So if you're in the field, you need to have a smoke. Um, if you're somewhere at, uh, let's say if you're personal home and you're taking a break, um, maybe that's possible, but uh, it's, it's a very sensitive subject um, to the to simple fact that you are still in the presence of the uh, work vehicle. So I would say only at your personal home, uh, anywhere else, definitely try to stay away from it because um, they already say that there are certain spots in, uh, in public that you're not supposed to be smoke smoking. So in order to be safe, just do it at your personal home and uh, if anything changes, we can change it. Sure, thank you. And uh, how about here at the warehouse during the work day? I need to have a smoke, where should I go? So in the warehouse, uh, of course not in the warehouse at all. Uh, if, uh, in the front of our facility here, we have uh, like some grass across the street. So the best way to take care of that is possibly walk off of campus and uh, walk across the street to be able to fulfill your needs. Okay, or here out back. Or here out back in the... Okay. Yep. All right, thank you. So just to make sure I'm hearing you clearly, no smoking in the vehicles. Correct. And just uh, follow maybe local ordinances when I'm out smoking in public. Exactly. All right, thank you. So Marlon, I'm kind of an aggressive driver. Tell me, how am I being recorded uh, here when I'm driving the company vehicle? So um, with our company vehicles, we have a uh, tracking system. Um, it's a form of use of a geotab. Uh, each of the managers have access to the program to see uh, your every move from uh, whether you're harsh driving, harsh braking, um, speeding, and also if you're not wearing a seatbelt. Uh, uh, from previous uh, experiences, I've heard of certain companies where even with the texting and driving, texting and driving is a bad thing. Um, a lot of times semi-truck drivers are calling in to certain jobs and letting them know that, letting certain companies know that their, their uh, operators aren't operating safely. So definitely be careful of that as well. Okay, so I need to slow down, uh, not break suddenly, and wear my seat belts. Correct. And also stay off my phone. That's correct. Great, thanks. So Marlon, I've got my gas card. I already know I can't take it with me. It needs to stay in the vehicle, but where do I go to get gas? So um, pretty much you're, any, you're able to go anywhere to get gas. Uh, like uh, Joe said at the beginning of the training, you're able to, uh, each car is tied to its own vehicle, but everybody's gonna have their own pin. Uh, usually your pin is the last four digits of your social security number. Uh, if you do have any issues with that, of course, uh, any of the managers can take, help take care of that. And can I put any gas in it? What should I put inside? So uh, what you should be putting in is unleaded gas. Okay. Uh, not premium and not uh, mid-grade. And not diesel? Not de Definitely not oh, diesel. Okay. <laughs> All right, Joe, so I'm driving down the street and uh, I'm riding behind a semi-truck and it chips up a rock and it hits the windshield. Uh, what do I do? Sure, so anytime the vehicle is damaged in any way, we need to fill out an incident report. Um, that report is online. I can send you a link to that or there's a paper copy in every vehicle in the glove box. That needs to be filled out right away and you need to let your field coordinator or supervisor know as soon as possible so that we can work to get that fixed. Weekly, we should also be filling out a, um, a weekly report on the vehicle that uh, shows pictures of the size of the vehicle, uh, has your mileage on there, the last oil change that you had, all the information related to the vehicle so that we know that the vehicle is in uh, current repair um, and everything's good. And that's online too? That, that can be online as well. Uh, there's a link to that. And uh, that's to be done every Friday or at least once a week until your last day of the week is Thursday. Well, Marlon, thanks for all your help today. I feel like I'm ready to hit the field. All right, Joseph, drive safe.